Overlooking the marina in the city of Lagos, this is where the shares of public liability uh, companies that are not quoted on the NSC are traded. This is the office of the NASD OTC, and we're making capital market history today. This, today is going to be the first investor conference. So uh, uh, two companies are coming, two companies traded on the OTC are going to come and meet with investors analysts and all the general public that are basically interested in the companies. We're going to be having interviews with the MD of uh, CSCS and we're also going to be meeting with uh, 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 Acon Petroleum also. This is Business Nigeria. My name is Tunji Andrews. You talked about the uh, cost to income. I mean, I, I want to know about your cost to income projections basically around the fact that you spoke about building some new platforms and we know that on the short term that is going to be a huge expense but maybe over the short term or longer term that may reduce significantly but basically how are you preparing for that? As a company we look at a number of things. Uh, one is obviously investments that's coming down the road and uh, the, those investments have a purpose and the purpose being that we would end up being uh, having the versatility and we'd be able to do more with what we have in terms of uh, the platform replacement. And obviously when you're replacing a platform, you also have to replace the hardware because yeah. the current hardware um, is, 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 you know, is doing its job. However, with the new platform, the requirements is for a, a faster uh, processor and higher speed and so on and so forth. So that we believe in um, of course, being a capital expenditure, it's amortized over a period of time. So it would be amortized over um, uh, four to five years, depending on the software or the hardware. And uh, um, with that, we will have depreciation costs going up. Um, if you spend two, three million dollars uh, on these sort of things, and then you s share that across the five years or so, you'd see a significant increase in depreciation costs sure. and that so it's not going to hit one year but it's over a period of time uh, and of course there are also some assumptions that has have to be made about exchange rate uh, and exchange rate stability uh, the economy generally uh, is the economy attractive to foreign investors and all of those have implications on the values of transactions which I had discussed earlier. Um, so what you find is that the, the, those assumptions would also have to be properly made, uh, which is where um, during the next uh, month or two, we would actually during the next month, we would work on those to come up with our short term and medium term uh, strategy and plan. But we do have something that is of burning uh, uh, yeah, and, and that is that we must diversify our income. Now talking about diversification, how exactly do you tend to uh, um, take advantage of the African continent? We know that Nigeria, the inclusion is still very low, but um, I mean there are significant other parts of Africa that are still, uh, that have started trading but maybe not as significant as, as Nigeria, but how do you intend to take advantage of that? We, we have formed AfriClear, which is an entity that is basically a CSD extension, a virtual CSD that would be offering services and solutions to the African markets. Uh, one must note that CSDs have these nationalistic uh, 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 tendencies. Generally, countries wrap themselves around CSDs, considering it a, a, a something that is of significant importance to the country. And therefore, you find even a small country would insist on having their own exchange and their own CSD, uh, even if it doesn't make economic sense. Uh, but what we have discovered is that not all African countries have the size of market and the size of CSDs like Nigeria, Kenya, Egypt, South Africa, uh, or Morocco. Uh, what you find is that most are small ones. And because they are small, they may be suboptimal. They may not be able to invest in the kinds of platforms and solutions oh. some of us do. So AfriClear's idea is, the, the idea behind AfriClear is to have a world-class 
technology platform that the other African countries can actually use, including Nigeria, if we so decide not to invest in a solution, but it's available on AfriClear, we use it. And then the AfriClear and the country that is using that service would share the revenue. Uh, so, um, and the other thing is that um, if we, if a single CSD goes to a technology vendor to purchase solutions, they are, you are basically treated as one person. But AfriClear being owned by many CSDs, because we are opening up to all the CSDs in Africa to be shareholders, um, then what happens is that that collective bargaining power Absolutely. makes it, exactly, makes it compelling for any vendor to not ignore uh, AfriClear and indeed Africa. So, so that's that. those are some of the uh, uh, um, strategy that we are going to deploy in terms of servicing the African uh, uh, economies or the African markets uh, at the same time uh, offer them world-class solution and at the same time be win-win uh, and be profitable venture. Well, you spoke about uh, coming to the market within the next um, 12 to 18 months to um, raise about 3 billion Naira. Um, could you give us an explanation, a, a bit of an insight into what uh, the capital will be used for uh, exactly? Basically, it's, uh, it's, I'll call it sort of a stabilization fund. Uh, out, of all, out of the value we are raising, we're going to deepen our operations in what we currently do. Okay. And uh, a portion of it will go into uh, entering a new business, which is the gas business I talked about. Uh, but the bulk of it will go into setting up facilities for aviation foiling business. Um, we're, we're, we're going to commence uh, full-fledged lubricant manufacturing because right now we operate out of a third party uh, blending facility. What we're going to do is to build our own facility, which we are in the process of doing now. Things are, uh, preparations are being made to commence uh, the building of that facility. Uh, we're going to as well expand the retail business. But this would, the bulk of the expansion for the re retail business will come by way of franchise. But at some point, we intend to brand some of these franchise uh, uh, locations, and that will cost uh, the, the funding for that will come from some out of this uh, three about three million we're talking about. Uh, basically, that's what it's going to do. Uh, if a little percentage of this will go into working capital, mm. or basically is to grow what we do now and begin uh, the RPG. It's a related business. RPG yeah. is a related business. It's just going to work out through our retail out outlets. As we expand, we, we put out uh, uh, LPG operations in, uh, uh, in viable locations. Same as for the lubricant business. As we expand our retail reach, we, s we push out the products through all those retail, uh, uh, retail outlets. Yeah. Maybe I need to understand and get into the mind of someone who is a downstream player. Because you know when, when, when you generally speak about subsidy to the average Nigerian, they see it as, you know, largesse, money to waste. You know, they just see it as some sort of uh, money that is, is free for all to spend. But I, I need to ask you, is, is, is subsidy prudent for your business? That subsidy happens all over the world. Yeah. Uh, but the problem for us, so subsidy is not bad. The challenge for us as a, a downstream player is when we go ahead and buy, and we're, so we're, we're selling for 10 Naira. To make profit, we'll sell for 10 Naira without subsidy, assuming. You tell us to sell for 7 Naira, which wipes my margin yeah. and wipes some portion of my cost, the cost of the product. So at the time I'm selling at seven naira, I'm three naira short. I have no margin, and then I'm not getting all of my capital back. Now, you hold on to that three naira, and you, it takes long, it takes six months. I'm not forgetting the fact that I, I actually borrowed 
that money. So I'm not able to pay back. I'm not able to use that money to generate more income. Mm. So I'm holding the bank. I'm not deriving any benefit from the money I'm holding the bank. And the bank is charging me, possibly even giving me higher interest rates because of the delays. So for me, subsidy is not good. Mm. Subsidy, in that scenario, subsidy is an issue. It has adverse effects on my business. We saw your projections and they spoke about 2016, 2017. So let's give that a, a phase. Three years from now, where will Acon Petroleum be? Three years from now, Acon would uh, be a uh, leading downstream player. Acon would have about uh, 200 retail stations. I think the majors have about uh, 400, about 400. We'll have about 200. We'll be a top class indigenous player. Uh, we will be gearing up to move across the oil and gas value chain because we have plans to not just remain in downstream sector, we have plans to become an integrated uh, uh, oil and gas energy player, yes. So in three years' time, we would have come to the point where we can uh, look out and say, okay, where do we, where do we go?